I'm here tonight with a special guest. He's an author of three books, AMS Alpha Male Strategies. How you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing great, brother. How about yourself? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Excited to have you here. Um, I know you have a huge YouTube channel and a huge mm -hmm. following. And one of the things that I did want to talk to you about that you're really, really specific on, and mm -hmm. that's being on your purpose. Mm -hmm. So so let's tell everybody what you what you mean when you say that. Well, the thing with about being on your purpose, guys, is you have to find something that gets you up in the morning. You have to have something that gives you life, something that makes you feel like life is more than just crap. So this is what I've learned in my life. You work and then after work, this is the issue where most people, you either can gain something in life or lose something in life. So a lot of people dabble in vices and stuff like that that cost you money like marijuana, alcohol, strip clubs, whatever, gambling, whatever, because we need that release. Or women. Let me throw that in there too. Or mm -hmm. women. And this is why you see a lot of guys chase women the way they do. And I'll be the first one to tell you I was guilty of it also. This was my pastime. Chase mm -hmm. women. I'm not blaming women. I'm blaming myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what I've learned is that if a man gonna either have purpose in his life, something that he's passionate about, something that he loves, something that's gonna better his life, something that when I wake up in the morning, the first thing is on my mind is this love of mine. It used to be fitness and this has taken over it. The same way I'm passionate about this was the same way I used to read every physical uh, book, education book, watch all the physical education videos. It's the same way I'm passionate about this now. Now this has replaced that and overtook that. And this is what gets me up in the morning. And who knows, our passion and purpose in life changes. Um, what you is today might not be what you're passionate about 10 years from now. And that's fine. We grow, we evolve, our interests change, which is exactly why relationships don't last a lot of times because you grow apart. A lot of people say, well, what happened to that relationship? People change. George, I'm quite sure you're not the same guy you was 20 years ago. I'm, I'm definitely not. And so sometimes your pur purpose and passion in life changes. But we all need to have something that we're passionate about that wakes us up, that dries up, dries us. It's something that it doesn't feel like work. It almost feels like I'm getting paid for this. And that's sometimes I like, I just did a Skype with a guy, helping him out, I was Skype. And I'm like, that's something I used to give to my clients that I was training for free, doing a, doing a training session. And it's like, they the ones who put the, the ideal in my head that, you know, maybe that's something you should look into. Cause I used to give them advice and stuff like this, life advice. And, and might I kid you now, these guys were millionaires. Some of them were millionaires, George. And they were asking Tony. Me, yeah, Tony. Tony, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I don't I know. I get that a lot. I get that a lot. <laughs> I, you look nothing like George with the hair and all that. <laughs> I don't know why, George, but but um and these guys would be millionaires. And they would ask me for dating advice. And I'm like, I used to give it to them for free. And now mm -hmm. guys are paying me and I'm like, wow, I actually make a living so usually when you have what your purpose is going to be something that you actually say, I make a living doing this. Like I actually make a good living. I get I get paid to tell guys the mistakes I've made in my 40 years on this earth. Because that's basically what I'm doing, telling them don't do this, because when I did that, this is what happened. And I'm actually getting paid for telling guys my wisdom and my experiences and my failures. You know, a lot of guys think that I'm this. Uh, born this chick magnet and I did everything right, George. I mean, Tony, I done made every mistake in the book. And <laughs> so guys think I'm just this natural and, oh, I just I just do everything right. No, I've made so many mistakes. I screwed up so many relationships. I've messed up so many things that were going good from mistakes, overreacting, showing insecurities, not having a purpose in life. That's why I can tell you what not to do, not because I did everything right, but because I done did everything wrong in my life. So that's that's the thing with purpose, guys, is that it's just something that you love to do. And then you find a way to make a living off of it. And you actually ask yourself, wow, if you somebody who love gaming or love dealing with computers or 
software or whatever, and you start charging people X amount of dollars an hour to help them with their software, it almost makes you feel guilty because a lot of times this is stuff you would have gave for people for free. And now you're able to make a good living off of it. And you and it's something also I want to add this. Uh, I see you going to ask me something. I also want to add this. It's something that nobody has to twist your arm to work hard at. It's something that you can naturally do 12 or 16 hours a day. I haven't done anything. I haven't left the house today. Um, I go to the gym Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday, I don't go to the gym. And on the weekend, I don't go to the gym. I haven't left the house today. It's all been working on my book, uh, two Skype consultations, working out with you, made a video for my patron. I've been in the house all day, and I don't feel And I woke up around 11, and I've been working all the way through. Now I'm doing this with you. I don't feel like I did nothing all day. Yeah, but you got a lot accomplished. I got a lot accomplished. I feel good. If 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 I didn't have this right now, what would happen is I'd probably be at a bar chasing. Well, I would be doing something that gives me no extra benefit to my life, that adds nothing to my life. If I wasn't doing this, I guarantee you, uh, I'm in Atlanta. I probably would be out right now somewhere at a bar or something chasing tail. And that's the thing. That's taking money away from me. This is actually putting money, and it's something I love. And it's going to bring me much more excitement than being out at a bar chasing tail. And that's what? the thing. What what draw what do what draws men to you? What's the issue? Is it a lack of fathers? Is it a lack of guidance? Do you think that's a main issue? Is it is it social media? Is it Tinder, Bumble? Is it the women are getting all the validation and all the attraction they want without working for it? I think what drove guys to me was I just came right out, Tony, and I just told guys the truth. And I said, listen here. Yo guys are not being the best version of yourself. Y'all guys are making all these videos. When I, when I joined YouTube, the MGTOW thing was exploding. You had a bunch of crybabies on YouTube and, 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 and just complain about female nature and this, that, and other. And meanwhile, you're 350 pounds and you make seven bucks an hour. And you and you come up some complaining about female nature. Dude, if, if, if I was a woman, I wouldn't want you either. And, and, and you know what? All these other dating coaches told guys, uh, just work on your confidence, read my book. Only thing guys wanted was somebody to tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. Tell them the truth. Just tell me the truth. And, and, and you know, I, I really didn't think guys wanted to hear my message because I thought, like I said, I'm holding guys accountable and I'm not blaming women, which is what people, guys love to do. They, it's easier to blame the woman. And so when guys heard my message, they said, finally, some guy, uh, some, finally somebody who says uh, looks and money do matter. Like, finally, mm -hmm. finally, y'all been telling me for all this long time, looks and my financial status don't mean nothing. That's what the other day, coach, all you need to do is take my course, take my pickup course, read my book on confidence, um, learn how to fake confidence. Did you talk to girls this way? And then guys were like, I still don't feel confident. Of course not, because you haven't done the self-improvement. So when I came in with the message and told guys, listen, I don't have nothing in the bottle to sell you. I don't I, what I'm telling you is going to be hard work. It, it, it's not it's not in a book to tell you. I had no ideas to write a book. <laughs> I just like I just got tired of the complaining. I couldn't take it no more. And I say I'm gonna start a channel. I just can't take this crap no more. My channel wasn't monetized for six months. YouTube was going through the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. And I, said, I don't and dating and dating coaches on my side of YouTube was ba baiting me on this. And they had the right concept concept Tony about confidence. I won't never. I'll tell anybody now. Confidence is number one. The issue was they was preaching confidence to a guy and wasn't telling them how to go about increasing that confidence. Just telling a guy to be confident, just to wake up out your bed tomorrow and be confident, what's that doing? That's not helping nobody. Well, you tell a man, hey, if you get in the gym, you lose 40 pounds and you get that better paying job and you feel better about yourself and you feel like you're more attractive to more women, now I'm going to feel more confident because you know what? I feel good about myself. But just telling me I need confidence ain't going ain't gonna, to, it's not working. And that's what I was telling guys. And another thing to tell guys, and this goes back to purpose, Tony, was when you get on your purpose, it takes away that scarcity. Because when you have no purpose in life and you get around a woman, confident or not, you're going to have this scarcity because you're trying to get her to bring happiness to your life. Mm -hmm. When a man is complete already, Tony, 100% complete as a man, I have my job, I have my purpose, I have my hobbies. That way, confidence or not, that way when I get with a woman, 
I can act better. I can be more confident because I'm not in scarcity. So I don't need this woman to make me feel complete. I'm already complete. And you're just a cherry on top. What guys do is they go out, they do everything. But now my life, I'm still lonely. So I, I'm, I feel more confident, Tony, but I'm lonely. Mm -hmm. So that you got more confidence. You did the self-improvement, but you're still lonely because you don't have purpose and hobbies in your life. So that loneliness can still put you in a scarcity state the same way not being confident is. Because at the end of the day, when I get out of work or I get out of school, I have nothing to do. I still have 12 hours out of the day. So I sleep eight hours. I go to school. Or I work eight hours. What do I do with this other eight hours that's open? And that is what men fall into scarcity. So if I can replace this with hobbies and purpose, now when I get with a woman, I'm not in scarcity. Guys only want to get not lose their scarcity from having other women. You don't you can't lose scarcity from always having two or three other girls. You got to have lose scarcity from your lifestyle. So you have some guys, they don't have scarcity when they're dating two or two or two or three other chicks or at least one other chick. But if I don't have that, I'm back in scarcity. The only way you get rid of scarcity forever, depend not depending on how many other women you date on, is by having purpose and hobbies in your life. And that's why I've started to tell guys when they call me and there is scarcity like that, I say, I don't even want you talking to no other women right now. It's going to be total opposite of what you heard all your life. I heard, I heard you say that. I heard you say that in the last podcast. Take 30 days and do absolute just work on yourself. Work on yourself. And I don't just mean work on yourself physically and your job. I mean, as in your lifestyle, hobbies. I need you to feel fulfilled before I even get you with another woman, because if you don't have that, you just gonna blow it. You're gonna over pursue. She's gonna feel the neediness in you. And because you don't have no life. And I'm gonna say this also, if you have hobbies and purpose and all these things going on, when you're conversating with this woman, watch how much more easier the conversation is because you have a life. When you don't have a life and you start conversating with this woman, what are you talking about? You don't even exactly. have, you don't have nothing to talk about. Guys said, what are we talk about in the day? You don't even have a life. No wonder your conversation sucks. But if you tell this woman, well, I got this going on. And we're doing this because, you know, you're going to talk about these on the first day because she's going to probe. Obviously, she wants to know things. And now you got all these hobbies and interests and things, the purpose that you're talking about. And you're talking about it with so much passion. You never run out of things to say. Mm -hmm. So that's why I tell guys it's better to fix this part of your life first. You purpose and hobbies opposed to just going out playing the numbers game. When you get with this woman, you're going to be in scarcity because you want her to bring you happiness. When, when she's going to think you're dull, you have nothing interesting going on. You have a dead end. Or even if you have a good job, okay, you got a good job. What else going on in your life? What do you do? What are your interests? And this is what guys feel at. Now you come across as boring because you don't have nothing. You don't have nothing going on. So she thinks, how the hell I want to go? It's boring. And then she mm -hmm. goes in and chase the guy who's got an interesting and a lot of things going on. And you think like, oh, well, she only want bad boys, bad boys. Bad boys have a, a life. You have nothing going on. You're boring. You go to work, you come home, and you watch the Smurfs on TV. Why do I want to be part of that? Why do I want to be part of that, Tony? That he sucks. Yeah. I want to be part of it. I want to go ahead with this guy that has these going on. He's going kayaking. He's doing this. He's going horseback riding. That sounds like fun. I want to be a part of this guy's plan. You suck. You're going to be at home, want to sit on the couch and watch TV, and I, and that's boring. So, that, you know, all these things about fixing your life completely to where you're just an interesting person, to where a woman is just the cherry on top. Guys have no life. It, it, I, I get it all the time, Tony. Now, a lot of guys enter the manosphere. Mm -hmm. Now, they enter through trauma, mm -hmm. okay? And I noticed there are a lot of channels and a lot of uh, gurus that you had mentioned this a little earlier that mm -hmm. they always blame it on the woman mm -hmm. and never own their own shit. Mm -hmm. Never, you know, I know that complacency will mm -hmm. breed contempt in mm -hmm. any kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. So owning your shit is really important. That's part of your purpose. The thing is, Tony, is what I found out as in financial or with women, with every most things, people are a victim. It, everybody's a victim. You know, you know, people are, you know, they, they go blow up their money. And uh, well, it's, it's not me. Mitch McConnell is holding me down. Um, Donald Trump, mm -hmm. Donald Trump is he's holding me down. It's, uh, Barack Obama, he, he, didn't, he didn't do enough, for, do enough for us. And what I've seen is what I've seen is 
it's not it's easier to play the victim than to take accountability point blank period and the same thing goes on with women was why when i started my channel it's much easier to hide behind a dark screen on youtube and make MGTOW videos and complain about well you know women do this and women do this women do that yes women are pergamous what, okay what are we going to do about it are we going to sit around and make videos for the next 10 years complain about it or are we going to be the best version of ourselves so we are in a position to where we can mate with these women because at the end of the day that's what it's about so if you go if you, at the, women are going to continue to sleep with the top guys and the bottom guys are never going to get none. Are you going to stay down here and complain about that? Or are you going to make yourself a high value man to where you're going to be up here and be one of these guys and have access to those type of women? The bottom line, that's women are not 50 women will want to sleep with one guy at the top. And, and you have a hundred guys down here really willing to marry her. And she'd rather be one of his bitches. And that's mm -hmm. never going to change Tony. And so guys can either try to get themselves up here to be like that, or they can stay down here and be, Pre-selection is just in women. It's just it's, it's who they are. Uh, they see a guy that's sleeping with other women or he good with women, and that's where they want to be at. And you over here, and you think to yourself, I have nobody. You can have me to yourself. And nope, that's not attractive. I, I don't want that. I want the man that all the other girls want. That's never going to change. So what are you going to do about it? You're going to continue to play the victim, or are you going to do something about it? Self-improvement is hard work, and it's not no quick fix. If you're somebody who need to lose 50 of 100 pounds, that's not going to happen in a day. If you're somebody who needs to increase your income, it takes time to learn a skill. It, it, I mean, it does. It's, it's, it's at least a year before you get good. Um, me with the personal training, I made money quick off of it, but guys have to understand that I had been training all my life, so I already had a lot of experience. If I was 21 years old, I wouldn't have been able to make six figures personal training. I was able to make six-figure personal training because I was 34 years old and I had been doing it for 16 years off and on, but I had a lot of knowledge in it. The average guy, if you want to become a personal trainer because you heard AMS was a personal trainer, you're 21 years old, it's going to take you a couple of years before you get good at assessing bodies. Or if you want to be an electrician, it's going to be take you a couple of years before you to master this craft. The money will come. Just focus on increasing your skills first don't worry about the money the money would be there it takes time and that's the issue with guys the issue with guys they don't want they want to skip steps they want to get to making the money overnight everything is easy all these fad diets that's why you see everything in the financial and the fitness world everything is a fad and people because they know people are lazy they know people want the quick fix and they don't want to do the hard work water diet pineapple diet southwest diet all this no all you need is a calorie deficit diet Eat a calorie deficit for a prolonged period of time. That's what's going to get you there. All these other fads and stuff like this. Burn more calories than you take in. Burn more calories than you take in. And that's never going to change. I don't care what other diets. You could try any other diets. If you try any of those diets, if you eat more calories than you burn, you won't lose no weight. Whether it's you fasting or whether you, whatever diet, Southwest diet, peanut diet, Presbyterian diet, whatever. If you eat more calories than you burn, regardless of what you restrict out your diet, you won't lose no weight. Plain and simple. Calorie deficit diet, uh, build a foundation, get a skill or an education. I tell guys, whatever you do, get a skill or education. My biggest downfall in my life was through my 20s was I had no skill. So I just manual labor jobs, whatever little job. That was a big, you know why? No long-term vision, Tony. Don't, 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 I don't want to go there and do that for two years and it don't pay me anything. No long-term vision. I don't want to go here for four years. Don't pay anything. I went to Job Corps, quit. Went to school for a semester, quit. No long-term thinking. I can't see four years down the road. You mean tell me I can't make money off of this for four years? So for all you guys out there that's to understand this, that cost me a lot of my years because I had no skill. When you have no skill, instead of getting paid for what you know, you got to get paid for manual labor, what your body can lift and do all this and other type of stuff because can't nobody pay you for knowledge, which is you get paid more the, the harder you work, the less you make. And I found that out the hard way. The harder you work, the less you make. And that's what I went through my whole 20s. So get that foundation, get that educational skill. For all you guys that don't want to go to school, get a skill. And that way you can take that money and invest it and start your own business or invest in real estate, uh, stocks, whatever you want to do. And this is how you create wealth. There's no victims in this world. 
anybody who's watching this right now, if you choose to right now, regardless of what your situation is right now, I don't care what it was yesterday. I'm talking about right now. You can go to school, get a grant or a loan or whatever. You must just make sure it's in something that's going to pay some money. And I'm going off on a tangent. <laughs> no, that's all right. Go for it. Talking. The issue with school, and I want to nip this in the bud, Tony. The issue with school, what guys got with school, is they go out and they get these degrees in crap that don't make no money, and then they blame, well, I'm in debt. You in debt because you went to school and you just got, you just wanted to get a degree, and you weren't really looking at what this degree pays. So make sure you get a degree in something that's, you know, brings money into the market. Don't just go get a degree in fish pottery and just feel good that I got a bachelor's degree, but it don't, it, it don't really make no money. This is, this is what school gets a bad rep. If now, you go to school and get one of the STEM fields, go ahead, Tony. Now, I went in my, in my early 20s, mm -hmm. I, I went to college. I went for construction technology, construction management. Mm -hmm. um, so when I got out of college, I did an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I worked for a few different companies. Mm -hmm. And I've had my own business now for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. What I noticed is there is a huge, huge shortage of skilled labor mm -hmm. and people I know, I know younger guys. I think the average construction worker in the United States is about 50 years old. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know if people see me working and I do pretty good. I mean, I've got a house near the beach. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't drive an expensive truck. I could buy a new truck every year, but I don't. Right. Come but on. I, I, I enjoy my work. But mm -hmm. I'd probably make more in a day than most people make in a week. That's what I'm talking about, Tony. That's what I'm talking about. But it, and then and then you key that off of that with you you don't do the car and type of thing like that. You invest. See this this is what I I, I want to get anybody who watches this that victim mindset is that we, you can either adopt the consumer mindset, which is gonna swallow all your money and you find yourself just being a consumer, or the investor mindset, the guy who takes his money and he invests and does real estate and stuff like this. And see that right there, when you do that, that creates generational wealth. So when, when Tony is not selfish and he's not just worried about himself and saying, well, you know, I'm 50 years old. And so I probably got a good another 25, 30 years and I'm only concerned about me. When you have that generational uh, wealth mindset like I do now and you invest into things that's going to be here long after you're gone, that sets your other family up and you change your whole family tree. So you see somebody like um, uh, Donald Trump. No, n nobody that in his family is going to have to work again if unless they want to. But mm -hmm. they, they're straight. Dave Ramsey, nobody that comes behind him. Of course, they probably are going to work, but he's changed his family dynamics. And that's what I'm trying to do. So no descendants of me going to have to grow up the way I grew up because I made the sacrifices as into, well, I'm just going to be selfish and I'm just going to blow all my money. And when I die, the rest of the people come behind me. They struggle, too. And that's why a lot of these wealthy families, a lot of these people, they, yeah, they're, the Rockefellers are given an advantage. Yes, um, uh, Cooper, Ale, uh, I can't think of his name right now, Cooper on CNN, from mm -hmm. the descendant of the Vanderbilt. Of yeah, course, Anderson Cooper. Yeah, Anderson Cooper. He's a descendant of the Vanderbilt. Um, mm -hmm. Of course he's straight. And the people that come behind him are going to be straight because of what Vanderbilt did or what mm -hmm. Rockefeller did. And that's the thing. They got generational wealth. And Trump descendants are going to be the same way. And Michael Jordan descendants are going to be the same way. And that's what I'm trying to create right now. So the, the thing what I'm trying to say, guys, is get money and invest. That's all you got to do. Invest in yourself first and then take that money and make more investments. And that's what I do right now. I, I just don't believe I, I was raised all my life, Tony, to be a, a victim. And it's me and poor me. And I can't make it because I was dealt a bad hand and I, I'm poor and, and, and it's no way I could change that. What I've learned is, is it's really you. If you wouldn't have put the work in and do a little delayed gratification and invest, anybody in this country can be rich. I, I, nobody's going to change my mind on that. All right. You're giving a great message. Mm -hmm. And I, I noticed you had mentioned this also. Mm -hmm. You will give this message. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about women. Mm -hmm. That message is received probably better than this message. Mm -hmm. How to pick up women. You mentioned that. Mm -hmm. In other words, where is the mindset rather than mm -hmm. creating your purpose? Mm -hmm. The focus is on getting the woman. Mm -hmm. Why the, is that? The thing is, Tony, we have all this testosterone running through our bodies. I've been young. 
I try not to get on the young guys like that because I get it. I get it how it feels to walk around with a heart on 24-7. I'm not that young. I, I'm not like that now. I'm still pretty good. I'm, mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, ladies. I can still I can still <laughs> hold my own. But I get how it is to be a 21, 22-year-old guy with just sex and have a heart on 24-7, and that's all that consumes your mind. So the only way you're going to break that is you're going to have to learn how to get a – you know what? To be quite honest, <laughs> to be quite honest, when you that young, it's just going you that's just going to be an ongoing battle every day. And that's and, and I try to cut the guys some slack. It's easy for me to say now I'm 40 years old. I done been around the block a few times, and I've had guys email me that too, say, hey, AMS, you say all this now, but when you was 18, 19, 20, 21 – could you say the same things? And I and I probably would honestly say no. I, I I get that. So the thing with that guys is that you got to learn how to try to control it as best you can. Your sex drive is going to drive you. That's just the way it is. To start from, I remember being 21. I remember being well. I couldn't even think about nothing else but sex all day. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, just literally, it just consumes you. No matter what you the the whacking off and jerking off. And that's it, that's normal. I mean, that's, that's normal. normal. That's normal. And I mean, it just it just drives you. So I get that. It's mostly going to be us older guys who's been around the block a few times to where we've learned to control it a little bit. And let's just be honest, our testosterone it ain't as high as it was when we was 21. So we can just manage it a little bit. What I what, what I advise for the guys that are 21, 22 right now, what I would advise for you is to primarily focus on making your life great right now. The women will be there. So. If you make yourself great now, it'll be actually easier to attract women later. What you're doing now is you're not that valuable to women. If you're a 21 year old guy right now, you don't really have your stuff together right now. And you'll notice at that age, you know, you, when I remember when I was 21, it seemed like you struggle hard mightily with women because you just getting into your own. You don't really have anything. And that's when women start this getting real hypergamous at that age. And it just seems like, it's harder. It was easier for me at 35 than it was at me at 21. And that's more just being more mature and having more, even though I ain't had that much, I had more than, you know, at 20 than I had at 21. And so the only thing I would tell guys, and I, any guys who emailed me anything right now, I would say focus primarily on making yourself great. Because trying to tell guys, a 21-year-old to watch financial videos over how to attract women, it's just not that's not being realistic. I just know it's not being realistic. That's going to always be there. So telling guys that when I know I've been 21 and obsessed with women. So the only thing I can tell guys is primarily just try to focus on making yourself great and put women on the back burner a little bit. Well, you do talk about pickup and mm-hmm. game. And mm-hmm. now, again, when I first had gone to 21 a couple mm-hmm. of years ago, mm-hmm. After about the second day, I remember talking to my brother mm-hmm. in the, in the uh, hotel room at night. Mm-hmm. And I said, does anybody get laid here? Mm-hmm. Because there was a lot of focus on pickup. Mm-hmm. And then I've talked to Anthony Johnson about this in depth. I'm old school. Mm-hmm. Never thought it was an issue. Never mm-hmm. had an issue. Mm-hmm. So I think it is important. But I think a lot of it has to do with social media mm-hmm. and f- a fatherless society. Mm. Nobody to guide him. My my brother will say it. Mm. My grandfather was a player. Mm-hmm. My father was a player. Mm-hmm. It was inherent. Mm-hmm. And I think that's I, I still I have I don't have any issues, never have. Mm-hmm. So I don't so it took me a while to understand why men are having issues. And I'm glad when I actually saw like the pickup community and how to communicate with women, I'm like, well, obviously it's needed because it's growing so much. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's important. Well, the thing was, I was able to uh, sympathize with the guys who weren't like that. I, I got what they were saying. So I, I had my fair share of women growing up. And so but when I'm talking to guys, I kind of always knew it had to be somebody on the other spectrum, so to speak, that couldn't get. I, I, I used to get women off of my looks primarily and playing basketball in school and stuff like that, football in school and stuff like that. But I always knew that it had to be, if, 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 if I'm six foot four and considered good looking, then it's got to be somebody that's not as good or as, you know, privileged as me. 
So when I started dealing with these guys firsthand, I'm dealing with guys that are 25 year old virgins, 26 year old virgins. Wow. I, I get it all the time. I get it all the time. I got a guy now that's with what 30 years old going through like a five year drought. It happens all the wow. time. Just not confident around women. And he don't know how to get company. He don't know how to get more easy. And so that's why I was like, you know, just telling these guys to go up and talk to several women a day and stuff like that, that's not doing nothing. And even the self-improvement for these guys, it'll help them feel better about themselves. But when they get with a woman, what was wrong with these guys was they had no life. They had nothing interesting about them and they still was in scarcity. And that's when I came up and started telling guys, you know what, I don't even want you talking to women 30, 60 days or whatever. I want you to get your life in order because you just... You just have nothing. You just work or school, and that's it, Tony. It's video games. And that's this is why you struggle with women, because the video game is an excuse or uh, out from you not talking to women. It's just it was it's an ongoing thing. And so even if you gave them a woman, I could have introduced them to a woman. They would have blowed it because they're in scarcity. And the only way you're going to get out of scarcity is to create a lifestyle. And so that's why when I came into the game and I was telling guys, what I what what got me hot was I was telling guys to lie to women and guys and guys took it too far. They didn't know what what I was saying about that. And what I was saying about that was you don't lie about your money. You don't lie. If 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 you go out with these women and you are a virgin and she goes to asking you things like you know when was your last relationship or how long did you take uh, how long did you date your last woman or whatever whatever. I would say you better lie to create value. I said, you, <laughs> I said, and, and, no, and I get it. And for guys that's like you or me, we would never have to do that. But for a guy that's a 26 year old virgin or something like that, I'm like, she's gonna think you wacko or she's gonna think you're a weirdo if you tell her that mm-hmm. point blank period. And a lot of guys didn't get what I, they took it too far and they. Oh, do I lie about this? I like, oh my God. It's like, it, it made me regret even saying it because they just went too far over the board with it. And all I meant was if you're a guy and you're struggling with women and you haven't had a woman or you're a 30 year old virgin, you might don't want to admit to her that you never had a girlfriend. Now let's, you know what? I, I, I agree with you there, man, for sure. Let's talk about, let's talk about direct approach. Okay. Now I've noticed some controversy over the over the internet about this here recently. Uh And you had a really good point. Mm -hmm. Direct approach when I was growing up Mm -hmm. is okay. Mm -hmm. And I think there's different ways of doing a direct approach, letting Mm -hmm. a woman know that you do want to have sex with her, whether Mm -hmm. you say, you know, I want to make love to you or, Mm -hmm. or just, you know, some, some women you can say, you know, Hey, I just want to fuck your brains out. Right now. To a guy that can't discern Mm -hmm. the woman, he's going to have a real problem with that. And nowadays, I think it's a possible danger. And I do agree with you. I think you mentioned that one time to Mm -hmm. where you could get in trouble. So a guy that can't read a woman Mm -hmm. and comes off creepy, well, he could just be locked up. Well, the thing is... If you're going to do direct, yeah, I got, I could go on about direct approach all day. I got, I got right up. The thing with direct approach is this right here. It, it, to me, if you ask me uh, what direct approach is, basically direct approach is I need you to like me physically for what you see right now. And I have no, I have no, what's the word? confidence i guess i'll use that word confidence in my ability to raise your interest with my verbal skills that's how when i interpret so if i go up to a woman and she views me as a six and i can get the number there's no way i can sleep with this woman right now matter of fact i can't talk to her like that if i talk to a girl who sees me as a six or five or six perhaps even a seven i'm gonna turn her off with that being so direct like that Mm -hmm. because that's too soon because I'm not that attractive to her. Mm-hmm. Of course, if she see a guy that was a nine and 10, he says that same thing. Oh, well, it's fine because he's so hot to her. But if mm-hmm. I say I'm a creep. And so if you go up to women that only have high interest in you and use it, it's work. It will work. I will promise you. I've, I, I, I've seen women that gave me 
obvious high interest signs, and you damn right, I use a direct approach that I, mm-hmm. I can tell that, oh man, I can sleep with her right now. And I came with a red direct approach. But women who don't view you as that attractive, you are going to have to raise their interest a little bit. And this is where the personality is going to come in at. So outside of the possibility of catching a charge, uh, even if you read a woman correct, with the thing we live in now, it is mm-hmm. very dangerous. But outside of that, let's just take that away. Let's just say, hypothetically, I read the woman right. Well, now the issue I have is only women that I that find me extremely attractive are going to be receptive to me. If I meet women that see me as a five, six, or seven, and I talk like that, I'm going to turn off. And that is a woman that I probably could have slept with on the second or third day, mm-hmm. just getting her a little bit more comfortable. Uh, and then that, it's been women that I've dated that I said, okay, three dates, I haven't done anything. I'm out. I don't waste more time. Had I probably just gave it a couple more dates, I would have probably slept with them or whatever. Some women just take longer to get comfortable. Some women take longer to, to uh, raise their interest or whatever the case may be. Every man has a time limit in his head on what he's willing to date a woman. But the main thing is, that's the issue, the biggest issue I had with a direct approach. The girl I'm dating now, right here, I basically use a direct approach. And that's because she came hitting on me in the club. So I use basically a direct approach. Not that night, but on the first night that we hung out, you know, I was like, let's go home and get butt naked in the bed or whatever. And I mm-hmm. felt comfortable using that lingo because how she came on to me, how her attraction level was. I couldn't do that. with. I can't say that to her. A girl, mm-hmm. I'm I'm getting her there, but she's not there yet, and so that's why I said I think direct approach is effective in the right opportunity at the right time. Cause I'm gonna tell you something: if you're with a woman that's showing you those obvious signs, and you don't use a direct approach, you could turn off because maybe that's all she want from you is that. And and if you go to trying to date her and stuff like that, you could turn her off by not being direct enough, or she could think you're a wussy. So in, in that instance, what you were just saying about reading a woman right, reading her uh, uh, interest indicators is exactly right. Because if a woman is seeing your, those interest indicators and you don't act soon enough or you don't bring it up soon enough, you could turn her off because maybe that's all she's looking for. Or maybe she think you don't you can't read women well or whatever. But you also got to read it right with the women who don't have that high of interest in you, because if you come on too soon, you're going to turn them off because they're just not there. And some women like that are going to be like that regardless, even if they do see you as a nine or a 10, if they find you very attractive, that's still going to be too much too soon because they're going to start thinking that's all you want. So it's in those situations, I never looked at the way you said it like that, but you're exactly right. You got to read the woman right as in what her interest level is. So that's, I think that'll be a good way of phrasing it, Tony. Yeah. Now, another thing with, with high interest. Now, mm-hmm. again, when I entered the manosphere, I realized that I'm five foot seven. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't be meeting any women. And I have never had a problem. My brother will always say, hey, my brother, Tony, Mm -hmm. he's six foot tall. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know he's five foot seven. Mm -hmm. So I've I've heard so many things that because I'm five foot seven, Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be meeting any women. Now, you had I had listened to one of your one of your shows. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe it was from a year or so ago. And. I just I'll check out things randomly. But you were mm-hmm. talking about a guy you knew in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, do you remember Drake. that? Drake. OK. Yeah. And you I were him some, I'll never forget him. Yeah. So so t- tell me what happened with him, because I'm this, like, OK, well, this, this is what I've seen, Tony. Some men can accept their insecurities or whatever or whatever they feel like is a shortcoming. So. Like if a guy feels like, OK, I'm short. OK, yeah. Women prefer taller men, but it won't stop me. Or, yeah, I'm bald and maybe women like men with more hair or whatever, but it won't stop me. What I've seen in life is you have some men who can simply get past their insecurities and accept it or whatever they flaws or whatever they think their shortcomings is. And some men can't for whatever reason. And what I've been trying to teach guys is this right here. Yes, Tony is five foot seven. Is some women going, if Tony going to go up to, are they going to disqualify him right off the bat because he's short? Absolutely. Is some women going to disqualify me because I don't have any hair on my head? Absolutely. Is some women going to disqualify me because they don't like facial hair? Absolutely. What I've learned is what guys have to understand, uh, attraction is about preferences and time, timing. And that's what a lot of guys don't. In other words, well, with preferences, 
Some women gonna like short, some women not gonna like short men. Some women are. What Tony has accepted is that, you know what? Screw the ones that don't like short women, I'm a short men. I'm gonna focus on the ones that don't mind. And that's what some guys can't get over that. And so they let two women reject them and they just go in their head and think women don't like short men. And they just come up with this and they just make the general generalization that women just do not like short men. Why you would have just accepted as in, hey, those two women don't like short men. And that's fine. Pretty much. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I it was it's never been an issue. It never even it never entered my head until I entered the manosphere and videos. It never even was an issue. I'm like, well, it still doesn't bother me. Same thing with shaving my head. Mm -hmm. I've been shaving my head before it was cool. Mm -hmm. I noticed that when I was losing my hair, I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. I kept it short. Then I decided I was going to shave it. Mm -hmm. What a difference in women that now were attracted to me. Mm. I, I drew a whole different, a whole different pile of women mm. that absolutely loved the shaved head. Right. I mean, I never, ever, it, and it never bothered me that I lost hair, ever. And the thing what you just said was you never had a problem with it. So when you went up to women, they could feel that confidence that it didn't bother you. But the confidence came from you was you never saw an issue with it. You never had an issue with your height. The dude Dre was in school. He could attract more women than me. And I was like six foot two, six foot three. He was like maybe five, five. And this was like in the seventh and eighth grade. I still remember because he was like, girls would let him touch on them, touch on them, but they wouldn't let me. And they would slap me and let him touch on them. <laughs> he was half my size. And so I'm just like, I, I can sit up here and tell you guys, anybody that's watching this, that's bull. I sat up here and watched it firsthand. They would let him touch on them. And I go to touch them, they'll slap me, slap my hand away. So the point, <laughs> the point being, I can sit here and tell you, I know height don't really got nothing to do with it. Is some women going to disqualify you because you're short? Yes. But that's no different than some women not going to like me because I'm black or like George because he's white. That's People have their preferences. Y'all guys got to accept that. You have your preferences. Any guys watching this right now, you it's certain women. Do you date 300 pound women? No. Do you date? It, it's whatever. You have your preferences also. But guess what? Some fat women are married with so they found somebody who didn't mind. And that's the same way you have to be. It's somebody who don't mind. Yes, uh, whether you talk like me, country bumpkin or whatever, it's always going to be something about you that somebody don't like. And that's fine. You have to just accept that and just move on and, and try to meet the women that like you for how you are. And OK, I'm glad, who, I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. I've told a lot of guys that, mm -hmm. you know what, if she gets your dick card, Mm -hmm. That's great. And that's good for you. Mm -hmm. OK, I think a lot of teachings in the manosphere are having guys mm -hmm. only reach like nines or tens mm -hmm. and uh, some are unreachable. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't even think a 10 exists. I think uh, I kind of agree with Andrew Tate. He believes that a 10 is like a movie star. That's mm -hmm. considered a 10. Mm -hmm. So but I think what's happening is 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 there's a focus on you are only going to get this kind of woman. And some guys to be honest, just aren't going to get that woman. It's just not going to happen. And I'm not saying settle, but find what 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 makes you happy and what you're attracted to. A lot of guys won't admit what they're attracted to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's an issue also. A lot of guys, not not all, but a lot of guys won't admit what they're attracted to. I mean, I know what I'm attracted to mm -hmm. and I have no issue with it. Mm -hmm. So I think that can be a problem. What, it, the, the, what I say is a 10 is I think everybody. So I say whatever. Whenever somebody say, well, what's a 10? I think I just put up a video the other day about attracting a 10 or something. And the guy in the comment said, well, what is a 10? And I said, whatever 10 is to you. Mm -hmm. so, I saw that video. Yeah. Yeah. So some, so when I go on Instagram, I see women that I would say is a 10. Mm -hmm. Tony might not say they're a 10. Tony might say uh, Scarlett Johansson is a 10, whatever. And that's the point. So when I say a 10, I just mean. That's subjective to you, whatever's a 10 exactly to you. So that's what I, whenever I say 10, no universal 10s, just whatever's a 10 to you. And mm -hmm. as far as guys attracting um, the, the, the women that's out of their league and stuff like this right here, the, the funny thing is, I never felt like a woman was out of my league. Yeah, um, me either. If, if, if I got access to it, like I don't have access to a Beyonce or, um, you know, Rihanna or something like that. So I don't have access to them. But if I was in a location, I would feel like, you know what, let's see. I, so that's the thing with me. I never felt like 
I just felt like even with those women, it boils down to timing. I believe like if you catch them, then when I, when I say timing, guys wondering what I mean by timing. That's what I mean by timing. You know how sometimes a family member can call you or, or a friend and say, hey, you got a couple hundred bucks. You got a couple hundred bucks in your saving account. But, you know, you're like, ah, I'm a little broke right now. I don't really have it. But if they can call you the very next week or so, another family member could call you next week. And for whatever reason, you're in a good mood today. And you're like, sure, when you can pay me back. And that's when I tell guys, when I say timing, one person asks you, no, you just like, no, I don't have it. And you got 200 grand in your bank account. He's like, no, I don't have it. And then the next week, another family member asks you, not that you love this family member more than you love that family member, but for whatever reason today, whether the sun is shining on your ass or you got blow last night from your girlfriend or maybe you met a hot dime at the mall or maybe your boss gave you a raise or whatever. Maybe you got a new contract or maybe you just woke up on the right side of the bed. For whatever reason, you're like, sure, when you can pay me back. And so that's the thing. It just boils down to timing. I, I wasn't doing no um collabs for two years. And I just started back all of a sudden, like uh, a month ago. Mm -hmm. It's timing. Just didn't want to, that's, what I, that's what I see and I say, guys. It all boils down to timing. Everything is timing. So if you would have caught me four months ago and you would ask me, I, would, I wouldn't even respond. I was not even doing collabs for I wouldn't. I hadn't done, done collabs for like two years up to like a month ago when I did another collab with our Bulldog. And that was my first collab in God knows how long. I just wasn't doing them. I was just like, oh, I'm still here in my little cone. I don't want to be bothered with nobody. And then I just came up with the mindset that I said, you know what? Let's just do collabs this year. And I'm still like, I think this is maybe my fifth or sixth collab in like a month. Well, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. You know what? I've noticed that too, because I just noticed you started talking with different people. And I think that's good. Right. You have, you have a good rapport with everybody. Right. And, right. and I think what it is, is everybody wants to hear what you have to say, which is right. important. Right. You know? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a specific question. Okay. I want you to talk to a guy, and there's a reason I'm asking you this, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because I have two people that I know in my life. Mm -hmm. One was just blindsided by his wife that asked for a divorce. Okay. Now he is a he is a he is a wealthy guy. Okay. Um, he is a he's a pretty good guy. Uh -huh. um, and he was he I, I he reached out to me, which is awesome. Right. Now I'm going to talk to him maybe this weekend, but I want, I want, I want, I want, I want you to tell him what he can do. He was blindsided in a marriage. Okay. She wants a divorce. She got period. You know, that I don't know of. I'll find that, out this that matter. Okay. Yeah. Just go ahead. Yeah. So what would, what would you say to a guy like that? This is me. All right. So I live with a girl and I had put the car on her and I ain't had no good credit. My whole life savings down on the car. Things wasn't going well. I was willing to walk away, even though I had put, it might seem small and minute to a lot of guys. Guys got to understand, I put my whole life savings down on that car, but I didn't have a credit. My credit was like 500 or something. She had like a 700 credit score. And um, so I put the car in her name. When we broke up, I knew the car was going to go with her and I was willing to walk away. And that goes to my point with him. Whether he has a prenup or not, if you're unhappy in this, you have to be willing to take that loss and walk away. And I know that might sting a little bit. Obviously, it would be better if you got a prenup. But if you don't, if she's if the, if if this thing is not happy no more, you got to ask yourself, do I want to continue on with this for the next 20 or 30 years to protect my assets? Because there's no way you can tell me you're happy with this woman. If she, when a woman wants to leave, she purposely gets cold. It's not like she was walking around giving you blowjobs and stuff like this and all of a sudden she wanted to leave. No, she's been cold for a while. And quite frankly, she's probably been hoping you would do this before she had to come to do it. But mm -hmm. since you won't do it, she's like, fuck it, I'll do it. She's probably been hoping to push you away. She's probably already sleeping with another guy. God knows whatever she's doing. So you're not happy because when a woman wants to leave, it's, it's silent treatment. It's cold shoulder, it's back turned. So you're not happy. You're just there for either to protect your and keep your assets or to keep a woman because you got you don't want to get back on the dating scene. Even though you're wealthy, you don't want to get back on the dating scene. Because let's just be quite honest, regardless of how good you is with women or whatever, the dating scene sucks. It's a lot of garbage out there. It's 
It's a lot of women that are not worth two cents to rub together. And so you probably just don't want to get back on the dating scene. Like you're comfortable with her. The same reason a lot of people don't want to leave jobs that they hate and stuff like this. Yeah, I don't want to venture into the unknown. At least I know her flaws and faults and stuff like that. So what I would tell you is, if you don't want to continue to live your life like that, be a man. I would just take the loss, whatever it is. I would just take the loss. My happiness is worth more than whatever little money I'm going to lose in this. And you can get it back again. Jeff Bezos is already back the world's richest man. Mm -hmm. So if you lose a lot of your money, Michael Jordan, he lost 130 some million dollars uh, from his wife when he was only worth about 300 million. Now he's worth 2 billion. So if you got it once, you can get it again. You want to be happy in life. So you got to ask yourself, is she might get the house. Is this house worth my happiness? Just think about that. Just think about that. Is this house worth my happiness? I'm not happy no more. I'm not happy no more. I know you, you can't be happy. When a woman wants to leave, they make it blatantly obvious. They are bitches on wheels. They purposely try to push you away. She's done everything she possibly could over the last two years, probably from trying to even go as far as emasculating you to push you away. That's how women are. That's why they do. They, they try to purposely push you away so you can be the bad person. They, you can be the bad guy and she's a good person. And when you don't call it quits after a while, after she done done everything she can to possibly push you away, because I done had all this before, Tony, by the way. I done had all this. Yeah, I've been there, I've been there once or twice myself. Right. And so I know he's not happy. Don't you want to be happy again? And that's what I would ask him. Is whatever you're trying to protect those assets, is this worth your happiness? Just think about it. It, it, it. it don't make sense. And so if it's me, I'm out. You can have the house. You can do all that. I'm out. I'll get it back again. I want to be happy. If that was me, that's what I'm doing today. Wow. Yeah, that's some good advice. That's good advice. I did mention to him also not to uh, try not to speak to anybody that you don't need to speak to. Right. And definitely don't speak to any women about it. That was my second thing I told to him. So I think that was some good, good advice. That's some good advice. That's some yeah. good advice. <laughs> Without, you know, talk, to, you know, I haven't spoken to him yet, but I'm going to speak to him probably tomorrow mm -hmm. or this weekend. So I just. I know uh, it's easier said than done. I know it's easier said than done. But uh, that's what needs to happen. You got to cut your losses. How old is he, Tony? He's a little bit younger than me. So he's oh. in his, I would say he's in his, uh, he's probably in his early 50s. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I, yes, I'm, I'm out. That's too, you're still young. Yeah, yeah, you're still young. I'm out of there. You're going to live the next 25, 30 years? Well, it ain't even up to you. She wants out. So, yeah. and, and, and this is the thing with me, what I've learned from women. Trying to talk to her only lowers her attraction more. Yeah. Like the women, the, the women only respect strength and, uh, and abundance. So anything like try to pacify her, like I like I've told guys, let's hypothetically say I say, hey, let's let's try to get your wife back, right? A man, only way a man can get respect from a woman is she know he has the ability to walk away. If you go beg her. You just kill any chance of her respecting you because the only way you can get a woman to cooperate and behave is her knowing you have no problem with walking away. And if you lose that weapon, if she knows you don't have the ability to walk away, you can't be with a woman. They are not fun to be around if they don't respect you. If That's she, indifference. Indifference. One foot out the door. Right. At all times. Right. That's the only thing that women respect. You see what I'm saying? The old school generation, they didn't know what we know now. They would put physical hands on women to gain respect because that's that's all they knew. Like our grandparents, mm -hmm. so if a woman yeah. stood online, they put hands on them because they didn't know how. What we know now is that actually makes them respect you even less. They only respect what you said, indifference, the ability to walk away. So if I tell him to go back and try to get your, your wife, well... Even if she came back, she's not going to be fun. She's going to emasculate you every point because now she has the power in the relationship mm -hmm. because you have just showed her you don't have indifference. And you and so it don't work. So like I would tell him, she has to come back to you. You can't go talk to her because you're showing scarcity. Showing scarcity leads to women acting disrespectful in relationships and that women are not fun to be. You know, I hear a lot of guys say, 
uh, why y'all guys don't, uh, I, I tell guys I love female companionship and stuff like this. And I say, you know why you don't love female companionship? Because you don't know how to get respect from them. Mm-hmm. You don't know what to do. Women aren't fun if they don't respect you. Your friends aren't fun if they don't respect you. Your kids aren't fun if they don't respect you. Nobody's fun if they don't respect you. When you have respect, if you're around your big brothers or something like that and they don't respect you, they'll be thumping you in your ear because mm-hmm. they don't respect you. But if, and they'll be mocking you and, and, and throwing little you know, passive aggressive jokes out and stuff like that. And you'd be like, I hate my brothers. Well, you hate your brothers because they don't respect you. But if you if they respect you, you like, I love my brothers because respect is a great thing. So with, with women, if, you, if a woman don't respect you, she's going to be hell on wheels. So I would never tell him to go get her back or try to get her back. She has to come back. So th- the best thing with him as in raising attraction, if he let's just hypothetically say he still loves her, even though she might have been giving him the cold shoulder the last six months or whatever. I would tell him your best chance to get this woman to fall back in love is to walk away. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Had he walked away three months, four months ago and showed indifference, she probably would have pursued him. But when a woman treats you bad and you still don't walk away and you show her you don't have that power of indifference, what ends up happening is she lose all love and respect for you. So when she started treating him bad, giving him the cold shoulder, if he would have said, hey, you know what? This is not what I want. I want out of this relationship. I want out this marriage. And he went on by his way. Maybe a month or two later, she probably would have hit him back and the traction would have grown because he showed mm-hmm. By you staying there to where she actually had to call that off, to where she had to bring it up, let's get a divorce, and you showed that much scarcity, even though she knows she's been not wifey material, and you still wouldn't leave to where she had to call the law, that's when you kill all attraction. I tell guys like this right here, when a woman starts acting up, you have to walk away. Because what ends up happening is, at some point, she saw some weakness, right? She saw some weakness, and she saw some, she started dabbling, like, I think this dude's in scarcity. I think he's afraid of losing me. And, and y'all guys got to understand, that goes straight to that pre-selection factors. You're not acting like a high-value man with a lot of options. And that starts to turn her off towards you because you're not acting like a confident man at that point. You're acting like a man in scarcity. You're acting like a man that's not in abundance, that feels like, you know, this is the only woman that I can get. And men have a tendency to fall into that. I've done it. That's how I know. Men have a, fall, a tendency to fall into this scarcity when they get in relationships and they start getting attached to a woman. Mine's had got so bad when I was in a living relationship that I didn't even want to go out no more with my friends or nothing. Mm-hmm. I, was in the house I was calling her wondering where she's at. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, how many how many times have we seen that? A guy gets his girlfriend, you never see him again. I, that was me. <laughs> that was me. You get a girlfriend and uh, all of a sudden I'm in the house with my girl. And what, what ends up happening? You start to repel the woman after a while because that that fun, exciting guy, I don't get to miss him no more. I don't get to wonder about him no more. He's right here up under my ass 24-7. <laughs> it's tough to turn the woman off. So if any guy who's watching this right now and you got a woman that's uncooperative at home and being very disrespectful, your best course of action, to, to if you just wonder, what can I do to get her to cooperate or love me again, you have to show strength and tell her, hey, listen, if this don't get better, we're going to call it quits. And I know that goes counterproductive, intuitive to what a lot of guys think because they just think like, well, if I can just make it work. But women brains don't work that way. They mm-hmm. only respect strength in, in, in a guy that's in abundance. They don't they don't respect talking or trying to sit down and talk about things. They only respect action. And so when you act like a dude who's like, listen, I'm going to walk away if things don't get better, that actually raises her attraction. And that's what he should have done. So now it's got to a point to what he think is something he can say. There's nothing he can say. You know the best thing for him to say? I agree. I think we should get a divorce. And now she's looking like, holy shit, I thought he was a little pussy. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was a little pussy. And then she goes home, and then a month or two, attraction goes up. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe she remarries. Who knows? That's not the point. You don't do this because you're like, ha, I'm going to raise her attraction. This is this is it. And you sit in the house for two months waiting on her to call your phone. No, you treat it as though she's gone. And you move you be, on. You be sincere about it. You be sincere. Move on. Because guys are gonna hear me say this, and they're gonna break up with their girls, and then they're gonna go home and and, and look at their phone every day, saying AMS said that she's gonna pursue me, and, and if I if I walk away, that's not why you do it. Because maybe she doesn't. Maybe she moves on, and you have to be content with that. So if you 
plan on doing that as a game plan to raise her attraction back up again. Just understand, she might not come back. Yeah, that's good. That's great advice, man. That's good. I'm gonna gonna talk to him this weekend, and you know, there's actually a couple of him in my life right now. A <laughs> couple of friends that are going through the exact same thing. So, and it's funny because it all hit hits hit at once. So, well, so this well, was perfect timing. Well, the thing is, it, they both around that 40 to 50 year old mm-hmm. age, right? So what happens is, what happens is guys at that age definitely don't want to get back on the dating scene. They're settled. They've got content in their lives. They like, I go to work, I come home, I have my wife, we watch Seinfeld reruns or whatever go on, and they're content in their life. Meanwhile, the woman's over here bored putting her fucking hair out. The guy thinks everything's going great. The woman's over here bored. Guys stop dating their wives. Guys stop bringing that physical intimacy or uh, that sexual charisma to the relationship where it starts to feel like a roommate where the woman just like, this is, this is pathetic. You know, guys bring all this sexual charisma at the beginning where they're on a date and they stare into their girl's eyes and they make these sexual seductive kisses and then they get complacent and now it's like roommates. And so I come home, no longer am I bringing that sexual charisma, no longer am I dating my girl, no longer do I know how to touch her and make her feel sexy again. What I've gotten into doing now is I've gotten comfortable, I'm farting around her, I'm, 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 I, don't, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't dress up to make myself look sexy anymore when we go out. She just sees me, I'm all the time, I'm always in a t-shirt and pajama pants. I never put that nice suit on that I used to put on when we, when we met and I used to take her out and we used to do all these romantic things and, and we used to take trips. Now it's like a roommate. She cooks, I come home, she cooks, we eat, we watch TV and it's this dead, boring routine. That's the thing with guys. So the thing with any guys watching this right now, if you're doing this, if, and, and I know you're doing it because I've done it, right? I did it. That, that's how I can sit and tell y'all what not to do because I done done all this. Where you get comfortable and you stop dating your girl, you stop, you know, looking into your woman's eyes, doing what you did on those first couple of dates when you was trying to get in her pants and when you was trying to get her to fall in love with you. You stop bringing that sexual charisma. You, your, your, your voice, your voice pitched and changed. You don't even try to talk sexy anymore. Everything's like, hey, like it's almost like you're talking to your buddy. You know, it's like none of this sexual intensity going on. And this is the problem with guys lose with women. And it's going to keep happening. So I'm not surprised that you got a couple of guys. I'm surprised it's not more than that because it's always going to happen because guys are uh, the kings of getting comfortable. Mm-hmm. And now, on the other hand, a woman can just be a slut, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the thing is, this is and I've always said this, Tony. Uh, for any guys out there watching, I don't feel like a woman that is attached to you or chasing your validation will uh, cheat on you or even mm-hmm. see that guy. I've had girls that had me friends on back in my day, right? And they got guys that they got attached to, and they basically told me that I couldn't call as much anymore or we couldn't talk as much as anymore, and we was just friends. And that's been my experience with women it, when a woman is attached. She won't even see another guy. Mm-hmm. It's when that attachment is broken that when she starts wandering around. So, like, when I see this guy, I, if, if she was ever attached, because you say he got money, maybe she always viewed him as a beta male provider. And I don't think a woman can get attached to a beta male provider except attached to his money. I think only a woman can get attached to a guy she views as an alpha male. And, like, any guy who's familiar with me, I don't think it's no such thing as an alpha male. I don't think it's no such thing as a beta male. I think it's what you are, whatever you perceive yourself to be. If you perceive yourself to be a beta male, when you interact with a woman, you're going to be talking about all the great things monetarily you got going on. You're trying to sell how you can provide for her because that's how you see yourself as valuable. You don't see yourself as valuable as a human being. So when you interact with a woman, if you see yourself as a beta male provider, you're going to be talking about your job, your car, Things that you got going on because you're trying to sell yourself on being a provider opposed to the guy who views himself as an alpha male. He's just using his sexual charm. He's not talking about, yeah, I'm doing this and I got I wrote this book and I, you know, I drive this car. He's just talking about generalization, things that's going on in his life, not trying to impress her with his financial aspect. Also, regardless of how you view yourself, still boils down to how the woman views you. So if a woman is not attractive to you, But she sees that you have your stuff together. She can view you as a beta male provider, opposed to another woman who views you as very hot and she likes your personality. And 
whether you got anything or not, she just likes you to you. She views you as an alpha male. And like I tell guys, every woman is not going to view me as an alpha male. And some women view me as a beta male. And I can tell that because I have my, and for all the guys out there <laughs> wondering, well, how the hell am I supposed to know whether a woman views me as an alpha male or a beta male? Listen to a conversation. Mm -hmm. When you get a woman that views you as a beta male, she's going to be asking a lot of hypergamous questions because that's what she cares about. And when you with a woman that views you as an alpha male, she doesn't ask that. She asks about you, your interests and things like that because she's into you. So when I'm out with a woman that views me as a, beta, a potential beta male provider, she's asking me a lot of things about monetarily or where I mm -hmm. live. She wants to know all these type of things. She's trying to get a calculation on my net worth. So that's how you can tell, guys, if you were a woman that views you as a beta male or an alpha male. Wow, that's good, man. That's really good. That's pretty intense. That's, uh, I think that's some real truth right there. And what I'm noticing you're doing, too, is you're really, really holding the man accountable. Yes. Which, uh, and, and the only way you can hold yourself accountable mm -hmm. is by taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. being a better man. Mm -hmm. doing those hobbies, all the things that make you a better man. Well, the thing is, Tony, like this, if I tell guys, if you choose to get with a woman that views you as a beta male provider, don't expect nothing different out of her. That's why I'm holding guys accountable. And I tell them, if you get with, I, get, I, I tell guys all the time, I, I, I run into women, I date women that can possibly view me as a beta male provider. If I go and fall in love with this woman, that's on me because I know better. You knew from the get go she views you as a beta male provider. That's when I say I hold guys accountable because I knew from the get go that that's what she views me for. I, I don't know this guy and I don't know what the woman, but a lot of times, even when I hear me talk, a lot of guys know what the issue is, as in why a woman is with him. And he'll talk about his financial aspect and he, because he knows that's what it's about. Well, don't be surprised if you get bitten the butt at the end because you knew what it was about from the get go. And so that's when I say I do hold men accountable in every aspect, as in the attraction and also as in who you get with. If you go and around here and you go get a girl that's super hot, but you know she views you as a beta male provider, she will cheat on you because she's not attached to you. So she's going to cheat on you with a guy she perceives as an alpha male. Point blank period. Do not get in a relationship with a woman that views you as a beta male provider. She is going to definitely cheat on you with the guy she views as an alpha male. That don't mean him alpha male. That means she views him as an alpha male. Mm -hmm. Another woman could view him as a beta male provider potentially. So that's the thing where guys have to understand. I don't, I don't believe in universal alpha males. I don't believe in universal beta males. I believe no matter who you is, there are some women out there that, would, in other words, for the guys out there wondering what I mean by that, there are some women out there that would date a Leonardo DiCaprio and sleep with him because they perceive him as an alpha male. And there'll be other women that'll sleep with him because they like, he can help my career. <laughs> so, and that's, yeah. that is providing. So that is the issue. Now it's up to Leonardo DiCaprio. If he falls in love with this woman who's only with him for bettering her career, maybe she can advance his career or something like that. Or he can advance her career. That's up to him that he falls in love with this type of woman because she's the most beautifulest woman he's dated. And now he's falling in love. And now she's like, I don't want to be with this guy. I just wanted to further my career. And he's shocked. Like I tell guys, that can happen to anybody, regardless of if you're Leonardo DiCaprio, Drake, AMS, Tony, whoever. If you go get with women who view you as a beta male provider, don't be looking crazy when things don't work out on your end. Yeah, I like how you put that. You know, I've never really heard it put like that, the way you, way you describe that. It's not that you're an alpha or you're a beta, but it's how a woman views you. Right. There's no, yeah. there's no universal. There's no universal. And that's the thing, what I tell guys. And guys, my old saying is, any guys who follow me, we fuck them hoes too. Yeah. <laughs> so I fuck women that view me as a beta male provider. I just don't get in a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. That don't mean I won't sleep with them. So we mm -hmm. sleep with them too. So I, I tell guys that all the time that I like to use, I, I, I affectionately use women hypergamous nature against them. And any guy who watched my Wild Against the MGTOW video, that's exactly what I was talking about. I don't bitch and complain Oh, this woman's with me because I got a nice car. This time. I don't worry about it. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to wipe her up. Okay. If you want to be a girl and you out here chasing God because he got a nice car, okay, fine. The same way a woman use your sexual needs and desires against you, okay, two can play that game. So 
So that is my motto and what I use. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, no, hardcore. I get it. Yeah, that's, that's great, hardcore. man. That's great. Now, another thing, you are um, you're going to be one of the speakers at 21 convention. Mm -hmm. um, so have you thought about a topic or I don't need uh, you to give it up now, but I'm just curious I, on. I'm going to see how know. much time I got. I'm going to have like 50 talking. I'm going I'm to I'm see how much time he gives me because I. As you can see tonight, I can just ramble on. Oh, that's so, all right. That's all right. So uh, I'm gonna I'm write down 50 talking points that I want to cover, and then uh, I'm gonna obviously put the top 10 or 15 that I definitely my talking points that I want to go over that I think is the most important, as in what I teach. And so I'll just I do that. Obviously, I want to touch on purpose. There's a lot of stuff I want to talk on. I, I can I can write 100 talking points, right? But I just want to I'll see how much time he gives me on stage to talk or whatever. But I can because okay, there's a there's quite a buzz about you being there. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think I think that's great. And anybody watching this, I'm going to have a link down below for 21 convention tickets so you can come and see see Alpha Male Strategies AMS. Let's wrap this up, man. I, I really really appreciate your time. Thank I you, think bro. this was a great talk, and I'm sure it's going to help out a ton of men. Thank you. So bro. Um, again, Alpha Male Strategies. Tell everybody how how they can find you? Yes. Uh, anybody looking for a consultation, you can go to alphamalestrategies.com. Also, you can uh, follow me on Instagram at alphamale underscore male underscore s. Okay. Awesome. And they can see you at 21 coming up. And the 21 convention uh, October the 4th, right? Yeah. I, th I think it's the 1st through the 4th. 1st through yeah. the 4th. Yeah. I'll yeah. Be yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about that, too. I can't wait to see you up on stage. Yeah. You're, you're up there with some big hitters, but you're one of them. That's for sure. Thank you, brother. All Thanks. right. Well, I appreciate your time. And maybe we can do this again sometime. Yeah, no problem, Tony. All right. All right. Thank you very much, sir. And you have a good evening. Thank you.